I just want to start off by uh, saying thank you to Walter Pennington. I think you all know what a, a great story he has been for our organization. I think it's a testament to our scouting department, player development, uh, and Walter himself for putting all the, the hard work he put in to reach the major leagues this year. And we wish him nothing but the best. And on the other side of it, uh, we're happy that we've been able to acquire a veteran pitcher for us that we think can help us in a lot of different ways, uh, a lot of great experiences uh, throughout his career. And um, we thought he was a good fit, especially in light of you know some of the things that happened yesterday and how fragile uh, this season can be. So we had an opportunity last night to dig a little bit deeper uh, with the Rangers and we're able to capitalize on him being available. So, uh, so we're happy Michael's going to be a Royal. All right, uh, Pete, start us off. Hey, JJ, what's the, do you know the role for Michael right now? Is he going to be in the rotation? Still to be determined. You know, we, we still have to get a handle on what's going on with, uh, with Schreiber. We feel fine about uh, Hunter Harvey, but we got to see how he feels today. Um, but it's to be determined. We know he started this year. He's thrown in relief. Uh, he's filled both roles. So in a lot of ways, he, he is very, very good insurance for us, regardless of what his role. And we think it'll just play out in time. And when do you expect, I mean, you, the Schreiber news, you think you might hear something more? Is that yeah. Different? Well, I mean, he's very likely to go on the I.L., um we're gonna see how he feels he's getting an mri this morning we'll see how he feels and what the doctors say um but we we expect him to go on the il uh, how long it'll be is really to be determined uh but with hunter we feel like it's probably day to day with him all right uh annie jj did this come together pretty quickly then right after the game yesterday based on what happened yeah, we had been talking to the Rangers uh, about Lorenzen, and they were, you know, their their past week was going to determine what direction they went in. Uh, I don't want to speak for them, but I think it's pretty well known that they have some arms coming back off the IL here very shortly, uh, and they're competing to, to get in the playoffs. Uh, so when they officially made him available, uh, that's when the talks picked up, and it just co coincidentally was last night, uh, which was good timing for us. And it was just something we felt like we needed to act on pretty quickly uh, because if he's out on the market, uh, the, the market can get more competitive. So we, we thought we had a window here to try to close on a deal pretty fast. And I know you said, you know, you'll wait to see how things move with, with just the bullpen. Um, but is there a chance he, he makes starts for you guys and you guys kind of reassess your, your rotation here um, in the second half? Yeah, there, there's a chance he makes starts for us. Um, you know, we, we've all talked pretty openly about the number of innings our pitchers have thrown. Uh, so that's something that if we decided to skip starts or do something along the way, we have another person that we, we know is very capable of making starts. So we would expect him at some point to make starts. It's just a matter of when. And uh, I know Q and Brian Sweeney, they're digesting everything uh, right now and talking about it. So we'll see how it goes. And and make that determination along the way. All right, uh, Jalen. Uh, JJ, how does this change the rest of how you're going to attack the, the, the trade deadline heading into tomorrow? Yeah, I, I think whatever happens or doesn't happen also will have an effect on what roles guys slide into uh, moving forward. But we've got you know a little over 24 hours until the deadline ends. So we'll keep working hard today on, on different things and see what evolves and something, you know, our, our roster changes and may have an effect on other people's roles, but uh, we're going to keep working hard at it. You know, we, we've talked about the need for a right-handed bat, so we're going to keep working at that. And then, um, you know, still, again, you know, we, it was a good reminder yesterday of how fragile a season can be. Uh, getting depth in your bullpen is very important, and uh, we'll keep working at that as well. Appreciate it. Joel. JJ, how much of this, I know you're still looking potentially for arms, is is a reflection of the market and how, how pricey relievers are? And was this a, a way just to to add depth and, and go from there? Is, it, is this something creatively that kind of came up recently beyond just the, the injuries yesterday? Yeah, it, it fit what we're trying to do, um, you know, 
at least in our assessment of trades that have been made, uh, there's been a lot of prospect value given up uh, for players that either have a year of control or no control or two years of control. Uh, and we're trying to thread that needle. You know, we're trying to be very realistic and, and add to this club and help this team achieve what they've worked so hard to achieve, and that's to be competitive and try to make the playoffs. And at the same time, we want to be very cognizant of our future. And some of the deals that have taken place while we respect them, they were areas we, we wouldn't go. Um, so, you know, this was right in that sweet spot uh, of what we were comfortable doing. And I think the versatility of, of – of Michael made it even more attractive. Uh, so, um, yeah, this this fell right in where where our comfort zone is. All right, uh, Todd. Yeah, JJ, just, could you characterize what this last week or so leading up to the deadline's been like? This is a more difficult trade deadline, easier, tougher. What's it been like? Um. I, I, I wouldn't say it's been tough. I, I think we've kind of set up our own guardrails of what we know we'll, what we'll do and won't and won't do, uh, what players we won't trade. Uh, we've been very clear with, with clubs that there's some lines we're not going to cross. And we were very uh, accepting of if nothing happened by the end of this deadline other than Hunter Harvey, that we had a team that could compete and can continue to compete through the end of the year. Um, but that's a, that's a delicate balance. Uh, we know the clubhouse wants to improve the club, that that's the nature of the game. Uh, so we're aware of that as well, but we got, we have to do what's right for the organization short term, but even more so long term. So that it, it's kind of gone the way you would expect it to go. There's some tempting things out there that we stay disciplined to what we think we need to do right now. And we were very accepting when a player went off the board that we didn't get him. You know, it was fine. As long as, it, you know, we were comfortable in passing on potential deals, we were fine with it. So, uh, you know, you, you like to add good players, there's no doubt, but uh, you know that it may not always go your way. All right, uh, Pete. Hey, just to follow up one question, JJ. Is there, would you consider it a six man rotation? Or is this just more of kind of a filler type thing? Yeah, no, that that is that is being discussed. You know, that's one of, when you look at all the options we have, that is something we can discuss. It's not, six-man rotations aren't for the long term. They're for times when you have a long string of games. Uh, you know, we're in the middle of one right now, 13 straight games. We have one again at the end of August going into September. Uh, you know, with somebody like Michael and, and the starters that we have, that is something we can at least kick around and decide if it's best for the organization or, or for, I'm sorry, for the team. Um, but a lot of that also depends on how the bullpen is being used. I mean, if the bullpen is being used a lot, it's hard to go with a six man rotation and seven uh, relievers. If the bullpen's not being used much, then you can consider a six man rotation. So that is something that, that we can kick around and it is an option. It's not ideal uh, unless you, you, you can use it as a way to get an extra off day for a starter. All right, uh, John Harvey. Hey, JJ, uh, being that we're in Chicago and they got a ton of trade chips that have not been moved yet, um, have you had conversations with them? And do you know their kind of opinion on trading with you guys or within the division? Yeah, I, I can't get into the specifics of that, but yes, we have been talking to Chicago. Uh, we have a good idea of, of who they're going to move. Uh, I, I Again, I, I don't want to speak for them, but I, I can simply say, yes, we've had discussions. Yes, they have players that would fit our organization, but I think the ball is more in their court uh, on whether or not they would want to do any deals with us. All right, Mick. Hey, JJ, you've mentioned yesterday a couple of times and the Royals have struggled this year and winning those rubber games. Is it clear to make a serious run here to the playoffs that you're going to have to start finishing off a lot more of these series? Yeah, you guys aren't going to like my answer on this, but to me, there's no such thing as a rubber game. We're, they're not elimination games in the regular season. Uh, I know that a lot of more recently has been made of that. You make the playoffs and you win 90 games, nobody's looking back to see if you won the rubber games. Every game's equal, and it would actually be the exact opposite of everything we talk about to worry about today. Um, so we happen to lose a, a third game of a series yesterday. It's just another game. 
it, it's not you don't get extra points for winning series. So we're not overly concerned with it. Our concern would be more that we didn't win the game yesterday. <laughs> you know, that's that's really what we're more more concerned about. But uh, you know, we're trying to get to the playoffs and every game counts, whether it's the third game of a series or first game or second game. So we just look at it differently. And again, it, it sort of flies in the face of the messaging that Q has shared with our team that it's about today. We start thinking about three game sets. We're, we're getting away from that. And that's part of why I think we've been able to, to have success and be fairly consistent throughout the year. Uh, Carlos, you're up. Hi, JJ. Uh, this season is a success season. Uh, the last year, uh, the Royals only won 56 times. And right now, uh, we have more wins since uh, in the year. What is the mood of the clubhouse? What is the role to do the leader of the teams like Salvador Perez or Bobby Witt Jr.? Yeah, we're, we're proud of the fact that we've won more games this year than at, at this point than we did all of last year. Um, I, I can say like our expectation was that we would do that at some point. We didn't know when it would happen. Um, so we expected to win more games than last year. Um, you know, and, and, you know, I know this has been shared. I mean, there's a lot of new faces in that clubhouse and there's guys in there that have no idea what we're talking about when we talk about winning 56 games last year. To them, it was just I'm coming to a team that I think can win and get to the playoffs. Um, so they don't think about last year. I understand why uh, people are excited about it. And it's a story in the industry and across baseball, and that's great. I'm just proud of the fact that, that we're playing well and who knows where our win total is at the end of the year. Um, but we've passed that 56 game mark. So hopefully it continues to be a good story. And at the end of the season, we're talking about a, a 30 some game turnaround, but a lot has to happen for uh, us to accomplish that. All right. Uh, Sam McDowell, let's give it a try. Hey, JJ, sorry if you can't hear me too well. Um, just wondering, first of all, what you thought of Reagan's velo bouncing back yesterday, but also just what kind of signs you will look for and some of your veterans to determine if they might need one of those starts off that you mentioned a possibility of. Yeah, so, um, you know, with Cole, I know a lot's been said and and understandably so, you know, why is velocity a drop? But we were aware of it. We weren't concerned with it. And the reason we weren't concerned with it was because, you know, our medical staff uh, does a great job in keeping up and informing us of where his strength is. And if he's fatigued at all, we have ways of measuring that. He was his assessments were very strong, so we didn't have concern with that. Um, you know, he wasn't getting out of his delivery. He wasn't trying to force velocity at 93. You know, when his velocity was down a little bit, his delivery looked the same. So all the indicators were strong that he was fine. He was just going through, you know, maybe a little bit of a a spell of you know fatigue that wasn't showing up in strength. So, uh, and then as far as the six man rotation and skipping starts, you know, there are things that you know we can talk to our pitchers about uh, knowing the guys, the way that we know them. I don't think they're going to want to skip a start. I, I, it's not in their nature. They're going to want to take the ball. Uh, so that's where the communication between Brian and Q myself uh, with these starters is really important. And if they see an opportunity, maybe get an extra day or two, we'll present it and we can cover it now. Uh, if they don't want to do it, we'll respect that. As long as we don't see any reason to skip that. You know, and, and really we haven't so far. So we feel good about them going every fifth day. Once we get past um, next Thursday, you know, we do have an off day every week. So they are getting an extra day. You know, so it, it's built in already in our schedule until we get to the end of August, beginning of September. Uh, but it just gives us options now. If that's something we could use to help us get through the season, it's now an option for us. All right, uh, Joel, bring us home. All right, um, JJ, you talked about just sort of this push with the schedule, and obviously you got to get to next week and Thursday. Do you do you play short with the trade now? For I mean, he pitched yesterday and the day before, so is there is there a little bit of a a crunch here for a couple of days? 
Yeah, well, uh, you know, we've got somebody in Chicago that will be active today. Uh, Michael was in St. Louis, and he's got to get back to Texas to get his family. So we're waiting to hear back from him uh, when, when he's going to report. But we don't expect him uh, to be active tomorrow. It, it just depends on his travel. So, you know, he was hit with this this morning at about 9 a.m. So we were going to touch base again later on. Uh, his wife's Cassie. They've got a a year and a half old daughter. Uh, so he's got to uproot them and get them moving, uh, whether they stop in Kansas City and they, on their way to Detroit. Uh, so we'll, we'll know more uh, on, on his report date, but I, I wouldn't expect it to be today or tomorrow. But you don't lose a roster spot on him until he reports? Or? No, no, that's there, there's built-in travel time. And, okay. um, you know, he, he's going to have to, I, I don't quote me on this, but I believe it's 72 hours he has to report. Okay. I, I believe that's the, the rule. And then I just wanted to ask you, I mean, he he started two days ago, didn't make it out of the first, and then came back and pitched four yeah. yesterday. And I'm curious what that sort of speaks to him and his versatility. I, I'm glad you brought that up. That that really stood out to us. We had a scout in the stands on Saturday. Obviously, he didn't have a great start. Yesterday, they had something happen to their starter. And we, we can only assume that he went and said, hey, I'm available, and, and threw four innings yesterday. And everything that we've been told about Michael – uh, from his time in Philadelphia, Detroit, and previous stops, Cincinnati, is that he's a he's a team guy. He's a warrior. He's going to do what the team needs. And I think it just happened. You know, we got a great example here in the last two days of, of what he's about. So I'm looking forward to talking to him about that to find out exactly what happened. But the appearance of it from the outside looking in and our scout being in the stands, um, it certainly appears like he said, hey, give me the ball and I'm going to help the team get through today.